Could artificial intelligence improve your online searches? The technology is leaping forward in giant steps. Some developers even want AI to act as a lawyer in court. Also in this episode, 5G on board of planes. Is that safe? And, shocking but true, modern slave trade exists online. These are the topics that have moved the tech world. Migrant workers are put up for sale on Saudi Arabia's largest online marketplace, Haraj. Even though the UN has long been criticizing the Haraj app for facilitating modern slavery, it is still available on Apple's App Store and Google's Play Store. In other words, slaves are being sold online. Shocking. How does that work and who is in charge of stopping this? What exactly is happening on Haraj? With more than half a million visitors each day, Haraj describes itself as the largest Saudi buying and selling platform, cars, real estate, electronics, animals, and, as a recent investigation by The Times suggests, human beings are on the list as well. According to the report, dozens of listings are posted each day by Saudi citizens, advertising migrant workers. Haraj users can rent or buy them as maids, cleaners, nannies, and drivers. Foreign laborers in these fields are in a vulnerable position in Saudi Arabia. They don't get full civil rights and can live and work in Saudi Arabia only if a Saudi citizen signs as being legally responsible. This practice is called kafala. The legal guardian or kafil will write up contracts and even the terms of the worker's visa. As a consequence, people from abroad that want to work in Saudi Arabia post on Haraj to find a kafil that could help them. Here, a man from Yemen is looking for a kafil. And here, a man from Sudan is looking for new work because his kafil hasn't finalized the necessary paperwork for him. In this post, a Saudi citizen offers this man as a worker, writing, Salamu alaikum, this guy needs a kafil. If you want him, write me on WhatsApp. Kafils pass their workers on to other kafils, also outside of the Haraj app. Money is exchanged between the kafils, which makes it human trafficking. Workers find themselves in a situation of slave labor. The forms of abuse vary. Some Saudi citizens withhold their workers' passports. Others might physically discipline them and expect them to work day and night for less than six euros a day. The kafala system is binding and legal in Saudi Arabia and other countries. Selling your workers is illegal, however, but the practice seems to be continuing regardless even though the UN has already issued a slavery warning in regard to Raj in 2020. Who is responsible? The UN estimates that 50 million people worldwide are living in a state of modern slavery. And the internet, including social media in particular, play a crucial part in that. Haraj is not the only platform with this kind of problem. In 2019, Facebook, now Meta, came under scrutiny when it became public that domestic workers in Kuwait and Saudi Arabia were being illegally bought and sold online. Some of the trade had been carried out on Meta-owned Instagram, where posts were promoted via algorithm-boosted hashtags and sales negotiated via private messages. So, are the platforms responsible? This has been the subject of an ongoing heated discussion. Are platforms just content providers with no responsibility or publishers to be held responsible for what happens on their pages? What's your view? Let us know. You can't afford a lawyer to defend yourself in court. AI is coming to the rescue. Very soon, algorithms could be an affordable choice to help you in court. AI as your lawyer. What sounds like fiction is already becoming a reality. An AI lawyer could help a defendant fight a speeding ticket in a US court. How does this work and what could it mean for you? The AI program will run on the defendant's smartphone and work like a human lawyer, according to Do Not Pay, the consumer advocate startup offering the service. The AI will listen to court arguments and formulate a response. The algorithm then tells the defendant what to say through Bluetooth headphones. The technology was built on OpenAI's GPT-3 language model and retrained on a more law-specific dataset. It can search through thousands of reference cases and court decisions faster than any 100 euro per hour lawyer could. 
and provide you with information on your specific meta. But there's a slight problem. It's not clear yet if an AI is even allowed inside the courtroom. For now, this is a gray area. But the courtroom isn't the only place AI could provide legal advice. How else is AI used in law? There are numerous online chatbots answering questions regarding the law. They certainly won't get you through a case, but they might give you a good impression of what you're dealing with. AI can also review contracts, spotting issues and errors that may have been missed by humans. Companies are already providing such services. This could come in handy for human lawyers too. Around the world, law offices are starting to invest in machine learning. AI could help them compile documents or conduct legal research. Will AI replace human lawyers? It still needs humans to correct and finalize the output, which is a big factor when it comes to accountability. If a lawyer gave you incorrect information, there could be malpractice consequences. But if a chatbot does it, it may be your problem. Finally, the question remains if an AI needs to pass a test to act as a lawyer, since this is the requirement for giving legal counsel almost everywhere in the world. Who knows if it's been trained on the correct databases. The testing phase in February marks the first of what are likely to be many more efforts to bring AI further into law, making legal counsel available to more people at a low cost. The much-hyped AI program ChatGPT can be used in many ways. In the near future, the chatbot could even make everyday tools like Word or Outlook much better. And it might be able to save the world's most hated search engine. At least that's what Microsoft seems to think. The tech giant is set to make a multi-year, multi-billion dollar investment in OpenAI, the company behind ChatGPT. Microsoft plans to implement the technology into its, let's say, not so popular search engine Bing to make it more competitive. Can AI improve internet searches? Despite its bad reputation, Bing is actually the world's second most used search engine. Yet, it's no real competition for Google, at least for now. But ChatGPT could help change that. The AI model was launched in late 22 and became an instant hit. Other than what its name might suggest, it can do a lot more than hold a conversation. For example, it can write consistent texts after you type in some keywords or answer complex questions. And it can even help with app development. That means it can write code. All these qualities could add a lot of value to internet searches. Google, for example, works with keywords and indexes that are integrated in websites. While combining these two factors leads to fairly good results, the system has limitations when it comes to more complex questions. That's why experts believe AI software like ChatGPT could lead to better results in the future. It can understand language and context better and therefore generates more specific answers. Instead of only listing search results, it could even summarize its findings in a newly generated text. You could, for example, ask, when and how was Germany founded? Please answer in 30 words. It is rumored that ChatGPT-based features might be made publicly available on Bing as soon as March. What are the limitations? While the AI model is very good at writing concise text, it unfortunately doesn't always tell the truth. Sometimes ChatGPT invents facts for the sake of a good story, referencing people or studies that don't even exist. There are a lot of possible applications for ChatGPT in our daily online lives. In regard to Microsoft, immediately a few come to mind. For example, Word, Outlook and PowerPoint. So it's no surprise that the company invests a lot of money here. Ladies and gentlemen, you may now continue using your electronic devices in flight mode only. Safety instructions like these could soon be a thing of the past for us. The European Commission has ruled that airlines can provide 5G during flights in the future and other countries could follow soon. But is this safe? Do we even want that? And is this the end of airplane mode? While it's still unclear how onboard 5G services will be implemented, there's already a deadline. By June the 30th, 2023, EU member states should make 5G frequency bands available for the purpose. According to the plans, people traveling in the EU will be able to use all their phone's features mid-flight, including calls, as well as data-heavy services like streaming music and videos. 
is this safe? Aren't the frequencies mobile devices are operating on dangerous for a plane system and could possibly make them crash? From the early 90s on, when laptops and mobile phones became more commonplace, airlines worldwide preferred to play it safe. Officials and scientists were worried that radio signals emitted from mobile devices could interfere with crucial flight technology. For example, aircraft communications, flight control and navigational equipment. But more importantly, ground networks needed for landing. But until now, even though theoretically mobile devices could be a threat, there's no scientific evidence that they have caused major problems for airplanes. And by design, they shouldn't. The available bandwidth spectrum for mobile communication is divided into different chunks for different uses. So a cell phone call should not interfere with the bands reserved for aircraft communications or GPS navigation systems. After the recent plane crash in Nepal, users debated whether 5G services were to blame for the loss of control, but there's no such evidence. And by the way, a 2017 survey found that about 40% of passengers said they left their cell service on while flying. Do we even want that? Onboard Wi-Fi services have been around since 2008 already, but they were very expensive and painstakingly slow. Now European airlines will use special network equipment to route calls, texts and data through a satellite network that connects the airplane to the ground-based mobile network. This will be much faster. Optimistic estimates assume a speed of over 100 megabits per second. Is this the end of airplane mode? So could the EU's decision mean that smartphones won't have an airplane mode in the future anymore? I certainly hope not. While it is the easiest way to disconnect, for example, during the night, it also has some other advantages. For example, saving battery life. Wireless communication is by far consuming the most energy in mobile devices. In case you're running out of juice, it might be clever to switch to airplane mode. Are you looking forward to calling your friends from a plane? And in which situations apart from flying do you use airplane mode? Let us know. That's it from me. Bye.